I'm going to finish the message that I started Wednesday night about strange encounters. I feel like the Lord has begun to show us that we are truly living in the end time. There's a lot of messages I could preach that would indicate that to you, but this morning it is more about the strangeness of our hour. You know, our country is a country that all the other countries look into to see, you know, a lot about what God's doing. There's a lot of countries that don't like us because we stand for the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There's a spiritual condition in our world that does not like the fact that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That is the crux of all of the problems in the world. You can pray to a God, you can serve a God, you can even go to church, but when you talk about Jesus, that separates everything. Listen to me, because He will not cohabitate with any other God. That is one of the very first things that He says in His commandments, is that you shall have no other gods before me. So when we know this to be true in America is that we have a lot of, of different thought processes and democracy is a good thing for the most part. It's, it's, not, the, it's not theocracy though. I just want to make a, a quick difference uh, that, that we are as Christians under a, a, a theocracy. You know, a democracy allows you to, to uh, have a difference of opinion and still be okay. Uh, I'm okay with us all having different opinions under democracy, but the Bible tells us that when it comes to Jesus and God, we must all speak the same thing. I said we must all speak the same thing. This is where confusion comes from. When we all speak something differently. Now the strange encounters that we are expressing this morning and some things I will say to you did not just start in the last few years. I notice on television as they try to indoctrinate us and they try to tell us and try to uh, uh, get into our minds and in our homes. There are things that come across the television that I would never allow in my own life. It comes in through that TV, and, and if you watch it, and I have one, I'm not knocking TV this morning, I'm simply saying there's a lot on there that is simply trying to move you from what you believe. It's not, it's not that, that, they, that there's people uh, that so much that they have a difference of opinion, they're trying to sway your opinion. They want to indoctrinate our children. They want things to happen, say things that would go along with what they want to do in the, in, in the evilness that has uh, tried to infiltrate America, infiltrate our schools, infiltrate our government. There is an evilness out there that is satanic that tries to infiltrate all of those systems of the world that we live in and it also is trying to infiltrate the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know this. Surely you're not blind to that. That we are the only thing of resistance to the evil on the planet. If there was not a church of the Lord Jesus Christ, you would see evil much more intensified. Because the Bible says that he who is there to resist, he is still here, and that is the Holy Spirit. And when someday when Jesus comes... He will be taken out and total evil will take over the earth. I'm telling you there's some more strange things to come. <laughs> yeah, I know you believe me, but I ain't sure you really believe me. I, I know you hear me, but I'm not sure you're ready for how strange it's really going to get. <laughs> you want to leave out of here in the rapture, believe me. 
Yeah, you want to go. I'm here to tell you this morning that this message is basically to tell you that Jesus is still coming. And a lot of what you are seeing is a prelude to that. That if you can see these things coming on the earth, read uh, Matthew and other books of the Bible. We're going to be in 2 Thessalonians. But when you read this, just understand that there is a lot of things coming on this earth and it won't be long. But you and I as the church need to be looking up for Jesus is still coming back for the church. I still preach a catching away of the church. You'll say amen louder when the day happens. Yeah, there's a day coming when somebody's going to run to the church and there won't be anybody here. Get ready now. That's the story, amen? So as we go into this, I want you to think about, as I said Wednesday night, that the strange encounters didn't start with where we are now. I could take you back to Genesis and we have the creation of God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That is not a theory. That is a fact. But, you know, there's a whole uh, 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 educational system of science that says that's not true, that we all came from the Big Bang. So you have a choice. God's okay with your choice. But just understand your choice will lead you to a determination. Okay? So I'm not here to take away choices. I'm here to tell you God left a choice when he left that tree in the garden and he said, don't eat of it. We ate of it and we suffered ever since. It's not his fault, it's our fault. Say it's our fault. Amen. It's humanity. We choose. You still have choices. So if I took you back to that time, that is some people have a hard time believing that in the beginning God created it all. They also have a hard time believing that in the first chapter and in in the uh, beginning of the second chapter that God created everything and He created male and female, man and a woman, Adam and Eve, and that is how He propagated the whole earth. That is absolute fact doesn't matter. You can argue with it. Whatever. This Bible, I believe, over humanity. This is the infallible Word of God. And the Word of God tells me that God created man from the dust of the earth. Now listen to me. That's a strange encounter. That's odd, isn't it? I mean, it's so common that we don't think about it anymore. That God Himself breathed into the nostrils of Adam and He became a living soul. He put him to sleep and took a rib from him and made woman and put the two together and said, the two you are not complete without one another. It is not good for man to be alone. This is in your book. Then he finds this this strangeness continues and it is when we read chapter 3, we see the first indication of a satanic force on the planet to devise something against what God has said. Now, he is seen as a serpent. Jesus, or God, calls him Satan. But we find ourselves in a strange encounter in the very beginning where a woman is talking to a snake. Not only is that problematic, I don't know about you, but they would call you crazy for doing that today, but the snake talked back. (laughs) It's It's not a metaphor. It's not an analogy. There are a lot of metaphors and analogies in the Bible, but that is not one of them. That snake talked to the woman, and the Bible says that the serpent was the most subtle beast. In other words, he was not aggressive or someone she should fear at the time. So, once he, uh, Satan found an a embodiment to get to her, she didn't see it so strange. Now, I'm going to read to you what strange means. Now, listen to this definition that's right there on your Google. (laughs) Amen. (laughs) It's not me. didn't come up with it. It's right there on your Google. Strange, listen, surprising in a way that is unsettling. That's one definition of strange. Surprising in a way that is unsettling. Or, listen, Hard to understand. Those are the two definitions that I want you to remember as we talk a little bit about strange encounters. It's strange or unsettling the way that we don't see the devil as a problem anymore. That's a strange thing. 
that the church does not see Satan as a problem anymore. Yes, we talk about that he's problematic, but we certainly cannot recognize him in our lives. We blame him for messing up our tire on our car. We blame him for messing up, you know, the, uh, the washing machine's not working. Or we've had a bad day and he attacked you or something like that. Let me tell you something. He is working a whole lot bigger scheme to try to get into your spiritual life than to try to mess up your day on a Monday. Okay, the the encounter with Satan was not strange, and I'm afraid it's not strange enough anymore. It's hard to understand when we realize that he is the problem behind all that we are going through. It's strange that Christians can't recognize that Satan's influence is part of why we are not serving the Lord with more passion. Satan has taken away some of your passion to serve the Lord. It is, it is not just your humanity. He plays against those things to keep you from cultivating a, a, a desire or a hunger of thirsting, as the Bible says. These are strange encounters because we should be fully in love with Jesus. I'm talking about madly in love with Jesus. What he has done for us, no man would have ever done. He was persecuted, he was beaten, he was rejected, he was hated, and finally he gave up his life so you and I did not have to spend eternity in a real burning hell. That is powerful. But where is the passion behind that? Something stole it. It's those little strange encounters. Satan has taken an old tactic of deception to influence the world, even people of faith. Now, if you're going with me in your scriptures, I hope you have your Bible, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm going to read several verses here this morning. My title again is Strange Encounters, part number 2, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse number 1. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering to Him, we ask you. Now, he starts off by saying, without hesitation, Jesus is coming again. That there's going to be a gathering together of the people of God to Him. Verse number 2. Not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter. As if from us, as though the day of Christ has come. In other words, some people were thinking maybe it had already happened. Let no one deceive you by any means. Now that's those encounters that you have. For the day will not come. Listen, this is a foreknowledge of what you can expect in the last days. You tell me if we're there or not. He said, then that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. And the man of sin, which that is the Antichrist, is revealed in the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining. Now you know what is restraining, and that he, that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains, that's a capital H, that's holiness, that's, that, that's the Holy Ghost. When you see that capital H there, that's representative of the Godhead. Who is now restrains, who do so until he is taken out of the way. There's only a certain amount of time, folks, for you to get saved, for you to get serious, for you to get serving the Lord. It's coming a time when He will be taken out of the way. And when lawless will, uh, one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of His mouth and destroy with the brightness of His coming. The coming of the lawless one, the Antichrist, according to the working of Satan with all powers, signs, listen, and lying wonders. Lying wonders. And with all unrighteous deception 
among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. Now listen, listen closely. And for this reason that I just read all that to you, for this reason God will send strong delusion. Delusion is is expressed in different forms, but it is really a basic watering down of what people believe. It is a mind that accepts things that are not true as though they are true. There's going to be a strong push in the last days to believe things that are not of God. He said, I'm going to show that. Send them strong delusion, comma, that they should believe the lie. Not a lie, the lie. That they may, all may be condemned who do not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So again, we're just going to walk through as we find this prejudgment time that we're living in in the world is being prepared to receive more and more demonic signs. Those lying wonders. I I believe without a shadow of a doubt that we are seeing more of the acceptance of untruth. It's, you, you cannot find uh, people that are appalled anymore at a lie. It seems like the whole world is more interested in a lie than they are the truth. Are you with me this morning? I said, you turn your television on, you don't know what to believe, and after a while you find something you think you can believe, and and, and in the mix of all of that, if a human being told you, there's probably some mixture of a lie. I think that they're starting to tell us now that they believe in UFOs. Next thing I'm going to find out is they found uh, Bigfoot somewhere, and and all of these stories are true. I'm I'm not here to say whether they are. I can tell you there's a whole spirit world that if you saw it was spoken about in this Bible, in Revelation, Revelations and before then, we've had women and people talking to, to snakes and beasts long before now. I can show you stories where angels came down and spoke to, to women and men and gave them uh, direction. We've had strange encounters with a lot of different entities over the years. I'm not denying. Matter of fact, I'm promoting that there is a kingdom of God that is run by the angelic host and there is a kingdom of Satan that is run by demonic spirits and his minions and, and those things are really prevalent and are going to be more prevalent in the days to come. Please understand that with those strange encounters, God Himself sends an even stronger delusion. That this is scary to me because it allows us to move without conscience. If, if He's basically saying, if you want to believe that this red cup is blue, I'll let you. If you want to believe that what I've told you is not true, you can find a way to believe that. And the Bible says, and then you're going to be damned by what you believe. I'm simply here to tell us that a lot of what we are now facing, we have had to change what we believed once to believe it. I said one time, there was one time we didn't believe all of that. There was a time when we didn't have all that to deal with. We absolutely turned a deaf ear to this world. We said, we're not going to believe that. We don't, we, that does not conducive to my spiritual life. I'm not going to get caught up in all of that. Only to find ourselves caught up into it now. And the Bible says that there's a, there's a great falling away that's going to happen just before the coming of the Lord. This deluded society of gospel that we are now seeing is so deluded, but it has been infiltrating the church on a very, 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 very slow move. It didn't come overnight. It's been a slow process. It's the old frog in the boiling water. You just put him in there when it's room temperature, turn up the heat, he'll never jump out, finally he'll die because the heat will finally, it just gradually boiled him to death. (laughs) 
There's a lot of what's happening in the church. So I'm here to tell you this morning that those strange encounters, are uh, if they're not as strange as they used to be, maybe you want to shake yourself, prepare yourself, get ready again, because I'm here to tell you Jesus is coming, and He won't be long. We're now slowly believing the faults and the error. It takes a lie and he makes it believable. To all who want to believe it's true. There's a difference. I said Satan will take a lie and make it believable to all who want. That's what Paul was talking about. They want it to be true. And so after a while, it's no longer a lie to them. It's truth. Now, this can happen on the, on the left or the right. It doesn't have to be just, you know, I, I've, as my friend uh, said this morning in Impact, we have, uh, we have such an aggressiveness and a passiveness going on right now in our society. There's a whole aggressive, aggressive situations that are, that are over here. It's so aggressive that it, nothing is ever right. Nobody's ever, you can't find truth anywhere. And people that are over there are, are, are telling themselves that they are Christians while they hate their brothers. They hate, they hate anything about anybody else. If it's not about them and me, it's all me, 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 me. And if you get away from the me and them, you're going to find out they got something for you. They can say they love you until they don't love you. I said they can say they love you till they don't love you. Now that's how far. And then you've got this passive aggressiveness that's way over here to the right. Then that, then that lie believes that somehow it's okay to do the things that we once believed and knew that weren't true. I'm just simply here to try to tell you that he has to make these lies something that we believe till they finally become true. That strong delusion, folks. When Eve met that serpent, he was Satan. <laughs> She didn't know it, but that wasn't a snake talking. Let me say it again. She didn't realize it, but that wasn't the snake talking. Maybe she had talked to that snake many times, but this time he brought a lie. He brought a lie that was believable to her. The Bible says that she looked upon the tree and saw that it was good. God had made it. It was beautiful. There's no temptation, folks, that's not beautiful. Huh? You, you can't be tempted by something that's not appealing. This is what makes temptation have to be overcome by the blood. You, you say, well, I'm doing pretty good. Well, what about your failures or the things that you're tempted by? Some people have no problem with alcohol. Some people have no problem with drugs. Some people have no problem with pornography. Some people have no problem with, 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 with the lying or cheating or stealing. I know people that have no problem with gossiping. <laughs> <laughs> talk about you every day praying at night before they go to bed speaking in tongues while they gossip but I'm telling you this folks that the Bible is very clear that these things are the acts of the flesh and they are manifested in the flesh do you hear what I'm saying to you you're going to have encounters you're going to have encounters that you think are normal conversations. Be more cautious about your encounters. They may seem strange. I don't know about you, but our politics right now seem very strange to me. I'm 58 years old. I've never seen this happen in our country. It's strange to me. It's strange how, how that we're seeing that an attack can happen on, on a candidate, shot, folks. I'm not talking about they lied to him. I'm talking about he was shot. He had the blood. I told you a week ago that I felt like God spoke to my heart and said, if I hadn't let it hit the ear where they saw blood, they'd have never believed it. It was a pop gun. They were actually shooting at the guy that was in the seat that got killed. But the fact, I'm just telling you because there's all of these theories or these, these strange conversations happening and all of it is to confuse you. Let me ask you, do you not know what happened? <laughs> well, one thing we know is a guy climbed up on the roof, took a gun and shot at the former president of the United States and hit him in the ear and it's a miracle this morning that he's still alive. That's not a lie. 
Do I need to know all of the other details? We want to, but it's our speculation that keeps us in trouble. It's that that we want to know. We, we have this conversation with Satan for a long period of time. She should have cut him off. You're only going to hear more lies. You're only going, they don't have a choice but to lie. The devil is here to lie to you. He is here to lie to you. He is here to lie to you. He is not here to tell you truth. And this world is his throne. This world he is over. He is over the systems of it. He is over the pleasure of it. He is over the things of this world. I'm telling you, only God can control Satan to the degree that he don't take over the whole world. And one day he will, through the Antichrist. There's going to be some strange encounters of lying wonders when the Antichrist takes that false prophet and raises a man from the dead. I'm telling you, they're going to think he's Jesus. You know why? Because they don't know Jesus. But they ain't nobody can do that but Jesus, right? And they're going to believe the damning lie that is going to cost them their whole life. Listen, the Antichrist for the first three and a half years speaks of peace. I have to tell you that I love you. I'm going to take care of you before I can get you close. Do you hear what I'm trying to tell you? There's some things that may look right, taste right. You may think it's right. But be sure that it's not a disillusion. That it's not a strange encounter. That something's not trying to trick you. Because Satan will always draw you in first with this kindness. Because then once he gets you in, he will rule you with an iron fist. Is there any believer this morning that does not already know that? The first time I got drunk was fun. The last time I got drunk, I was addicted and throwing up in the garbage. About to lose my family. Huh? The first time I looked at pornography, it was fun. The last time I looked at it was an agonizing, agonizing condemnation and guilt that came upon me because I knew I was addicted. There are people that had surgery and had to take medicine because they were in pain. But that pain medicine turned into something that is now costing them their life. It was good at one moment, but it turned into something negative. That's how Satan works. Don't expect the first conversation to be something so uh, hard. You see, we're at a point in time now, it's interesting to me, as we see, and I, I, I'm just going to say this, I don't talk much about this stuff on, on messages, but what's odd to me is, this is so, this is so typical, it's odd to me is, they loved their candidate a month ago. He stumbled in public. Until now, they're turning against him. I forget the politics of it. I think what is shocking to him is the fact that the ones that were originally with him are now against him. Folks, that's demonic. I will sell you for my own will. Now, I'm, I'm not saying it wouldn't happen on the other side. <laughs> yeah, they some folks think Donald Trump's the Messiah. <laughs> no, no, no. I, listen, I'm not making that up. I heard that with my ear. They said it about Barack Obama. He's the Messiah. They took a pictures and put it in their homes. Donald Trump is not the Messiah, folks. There's not a man out there. That's, the Messiah has already come. That's the problem with the Jews. I'm telling you, that's strong delusion to believe that kind of stuff. To believe that somebody's going to come take you out of this. I don't care who the president is. We're headed to the Antichrist. We're headed to one world government. We are headed to the coming of Jesus Christ. And that is truth, folks. And it's going to come no matter who's the president. Get yourself ready. We are becoming very comfortable with the lies. Ungodliness is no problem, and it's wrapped all up in God. 
The ability to hate and call it love after a while is something that is unbelievably toxic. It has infiltrated the church. It is hate wrapped in love. They will tell you, I have your best interest at heart while they are cutting your throat and stabbing you in the back. I'm telling you, folks, that is a strange encounter. What I remember, what, what was a strange, hard to believe and hard to understand. Now, that's strange for you to tell me that you love me while I feel you kill me. That is in the church, people. We were just talking this morning, Sister Donna and I, we were simply talking about, and, and Brother Wilbur, we were just talking about life and how, how there's been times, brother, that I've done things wrong. I had to go ask for forgiveness. Has anybody here had to do that? I said you did something, you didn't want to ask for forgiveness, the person you might not like, but you had to go back because you were trying to serve the Lord and you had to ask for forgiveness. Anybody else? Is anybody like that? But I notice that they don't have to. I prayed this prayer. God, convict them for they have offended me. Convict them. Let them call me. Let them send me a card. Let them say, look, I was wrong. I don't care how wrong you were. I was wrong for telling you I loved you and then I persecuted you. I was wrong. I'm, I've yet to get the call and I've yet to get the card. That's, a, that's at least a 50, almost a 15-year-old prayer. No, con, no conviction. Folks, we're talking about strange encounters. We're talking about believing lies. We're talking about believing something, and it is so strange. I look at that and I say, God, that's strange because the Bible says that should not be. That should not be. It shouldn't be that, that, that that's how, I'm also, I can understand, I can understand there's, you know, when you have a bad time, bad day, whatever, something may hit you and you say something you shouldn't say. God knows we all do it. I've probably done it recently. But I'm going to tell you something. I try to clean it up. That's my motto. I teach my staff. You mess it up, you clean it up. Huh? Sometimes I'm cleaning up what I didn't mess up. John chapter 17, verses 14 and 16. I'm going to try to close right here. John 17, verses 14 through 16. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world. <laughs> That's talking about me and you folks. Jesus said, I'm not going to pray that you take them out of this world. I'm not going to pray that, that I'm just put your name there. He's praying to the Father about you. I do not pray that you should take Mike out of the world, but that you should keep him from the evil one in it. <laughs> Verse 16, they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I said, they are not of the world, just as I'm not of the world. Folks, there's something out there that you and I have to find offensive about the system and the way things are going. If it does not bother you, you probably are getting deluded. You're probably falling into the falling away and the delusion. It's hard to believe that one can know the truth and taste of the gospel and leave it. But that's exactly what Paul said was happening. They are leaving their faith. You say, not me. You're already believing a lie. If you say it can't be you, you're already believing the lie. The Bible tells us that if you think you stand, take heed. If you think more highly of yourself than you ought, take heed. You see, Jesus is coming, folks. In Revelations, the Bible talks about the heart of the earth opening up and demonic spirits come out of the earth that look absolutely hideous. Read what they have. I, I can't even remember the describing. They have the, the head of a lion, the face of a man, the body of a scorpion, and the Bible says they will sting people. You will hate, you will hurt so bad you will want to die. They will cry out for the rocks to fall on them because they want to die. But the Bible says you can't even kill yourself. People may shoot themselves in the head, but they won't die. Think about this. I'm talking about some strange things coming on the earth. No, we're not there yet. 
but we are seeing some very strange encounters. They are getting our kids ready to believe that they're neither male nor female. And if you do that as a parent and you come against that, there's a problem with you. You should allow your child. When, when did we start letting the kids make the decisions? And I feel that. <laughs> I feel like even, even th th that there's people that don't believe that anymore. Folks, that's strange. Hard to believe. <laughs> Hard to understand. That's what he said about strange. Folks, if you don't think anything else is strange, it's strange to let a little boy stand there with the anatomy of a little boy and say, I'm a little girl. And say, yes, you are. We laugh, but folks, it's right. It's not going. It's here. That we used to believe that the pastor's job was to be the leader of the church and now we're ordaining homosexuals and lesbians. You know why? Because they call unri unrighteous pleasure. God did not make men to be with men and women to be with women. Do I need to do an anatomy class to show you? But it doesn't matter if you show an anatomy class. They've already believed the lie. And they will fight you over it. I'm telling you, they will fight you over it. Because they have now gone delusion. And now they believe that absolutely what they didn't believe was true. They actually believe that cup is no longer red, folks. It's blue. But I think somehow in the church it's not a full red anymore. I'm here to tell you, Crossing, we've got to get back to the place where you believe Jesus is coming and you live your life according to that fact. And if you start feeling like this delusion is getting in your spirit, you better shake yourself. For the enemy is coming and one day they will find. I want to tell you what you can know. Let me tell you what you can know. You should know a tree, by, a tree by its fruit. This is my last statement. You can know a tree by its fruit. Not by its gifts. Not by its talents. By its fruits. And a fruit of the Spirit, love and faith and hope and kindness and gentleness and tenderness and temperance, all of those same kinds, love, that's how you know if you're a Christian or not. I said that to a man and he said, quote what you want to, but I still love you. I said, don't feel it. I sure don't feel it. Feels more like hate. Now, I can turn into hate. Or I can decide and recognize what that is by the fruit of it. And then I got to not inspect that tree anymore. I got to go inspect my tree. This world will take your love. It'll take your kindness. It'll take your temperance. It'll take your gentleness. Do you even feel any gentleness? I'm t the fruit of the Spirit, folks, is how we know the truth. Thank you for listening. And don't forget to follow us on YouTube and Facebook so you don't miss out on any future content from the Crossing Worship Center. Thank you again, and God bless.